In the same way that division is the inverse of multiplication, a logarithm is just the inverse of exponentiation. Let's think for a minute about multiplication and division. If I say 3 times 5 is what, your answer will be 15 and you're performing multiplication. But if I say 3 times what equals 15, then your answer is 5 and what you're really performing is division. So when we set up the question in that way, we have our own symbol which represents division. In the same way that we introduce a new symbol to represent this idea of division, we are going to have to introduce a new symbol when we want to do the inverse of exponentiation. First, let's review exponentiation. If I say 3 to the power of 2 equals what, the answer is 9, and that's because you know that exponentiation tells you how many times to multiply. So it means multiply 3 twice. So we have 3 times 3 equals 9. Now what's the reverse question? Let's say instead of asking you 3 to the power 2 equals what, I now say 3 to the power of what equals 9. Do you see how that's a different question? So in order to answer that question, we can just think through options in our head until we come up with the answer too. Now in the same way that we had to introduce the divide symbol to represent what we meant over here by doing something different than multiplication, we are going to need a new symbol now. We are going to need a symbol that's going to be able to represent what is the power that I should raise this base to in order to get this number. So that's all a logarithm is. Let's write down that notation. So our notation is written as log base 3, the base 3 is written small, of 9, and we know that the answer is 2 because we know that the question is what power should we raise 3 to in order to get the number 9? So that's why our answer is 2. So more generally we have this n is equal to b to the power of x if and only if x is equal to the log base b of that number. That's the definition of a logarithm. So anytime you see log base b of some number n, you can think about it as asking the question, what power do I need to put in my exponent to get b to that power equal to this number n? So let's work through a few easy examples. Let's think about some examples using 10 as our base because mostly we're familiar with 10. 10 to the power of 1 means take 10 only one time, so you get 10. Well, what this means in terms of a logarithm is the following. The log base 10 of 10 equals 1. Remember, the log base 10 of 10 is asking you, what power should I put in the exponent of 10 in order for my answer to be 10? And the answer should be clear that it's 1. We know that 10 to the power of 2 is equal to 100, so that's how we know that the log of base 10 of 100 is equal to 2. Similarly, we can write down something more general. The log base 10 of the number 10 to some power p is always going to equal p. That's because log base 10 of 10 to the power p is asking you, which power should I use to make 10 to that power equal to 10 to the power p? The answer is obvious. Just like in the case where we ask the same question for 1 and for 2, the answer will be p. This also works much more generally. This works for any base. So your base could be 10, or it could be 2, or it could be e, which is a very important number in terms of natural growth in all of mathematics. But let's write down any general base b. The log base b of a number, b to some power p, will always equal that power p because you're still asking the question, if I take base b, 
what power should I put in the exponent in order to get an answer of b to the p? The answer is clearly p. You may wonder, what are you going to do if you have log base b of some other number, n to the power of p, where n is not the same as b? What are you going to do then? Well, we still have a nice rule that we can use, and I can show you why it works. If you're looking for the logarithm in base b of any number n to a power p, I'm using p because it helps me to remember that it's a power, that's equal to p times the logarithm in base b of n. Well, why is that true? Let's work it out. Let's start by letting x equal log of base b of n, the number n. We know by the definition here in the purple box that that's the same exact thing as saying that n is equal to b to the power of x. Now let's look at the term we're actually trying to calculate. We're trying to figure out what is log base b of n to the power of p. But now we know that n is equal to b to the power of x, so we plug that in. Then we get log base b of b to the power p times x, where p times x is the new power. But here we just have a logarithm base b of b to some power, and we know that the answer there is always that power. So the answer is px. And basically you're done. All you have to do is remember what is x. We started by letting x equal log base b of n. So now we're finished. We've been able to show that you're able to bring down the power to the outside of the logarithm. If you want to learn how to calculate logarithms using bases that are not found on your calculator, then click here for a video all about that. Don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more updates. See you next time. The key thing is to write down the base that you want, so that's why I have log base 10.